At Painted Community Hospital, we provide complete care for our athletes. Whether it's practice, game day, or any day in between, we've got you covered. We offer complete care on and off the field, including sports enhancement training. If an athlete is injured, we offer excellent emergency care and imaging. Orthopedic specialist Dr. Elvitar is available for evaluation and surgical correction if needed. Following injury, our physical therapy staff will get you back in the game faster than you might think. Welcome to Week 3, where the 2-0 Painted Panthers hosted the 0-2 Gillespie Miners at Brummett Lake, or Brummett Field rather. This thing might as well have been played in a knee-deep swamp. While the rain came in literal sheets Friday night, the offense was more of a slow trickle. Jack Armstrong sets Painted up inside the 5 early in the contest, but the Miners were amped up and ready to go, and they would eventually stymie the Panthers on four straight attempts. Gillespie can't do anything with it though, and they're forced to punt to the ever dangerous Bryce Edmiston. Check out the block from Sam Nolman. Then it's Mason Mazir with a crushing hit. His may not be of the uh, legal variety though. Edmiston's score would come off the board and we're still knotted at 0-0 at halftime. Punters take a lot of flack, I know. But check out the boot from Ben Holdhouse. 59 yards to flip the field. That's incredible. Yes, you're seeing this right. That's back-to-back -back highlights from a punter. It's madness for sure. But here's Gillespie's punter with a little one-upmanship as he sails 145 yards to pin Pena inside the five. So, what's the call, coach? A go route to Cody Klein for a 96-yard score? That'll do. That'll do. Except, this one's also coming back. Pena's whistled for holding their own end zone, and that's a safety. It's a nine point swing as the Miners now lead 2-0. At first I was like, I was really mad, but then I was like, we went, we went, back, we went back and watched it and he was the kid that got the holding call on him. He's on the ground, so we don't know what happened. Well, I may not have gotten the score, but he did pull down this sweet pick just moments later to help set up Payne's first score of the night. Wayne Perry bulls his way down to the two with a nice stiff arm. And Jack Armstrong finishes it off when he fights his way into the end zone just seconds later. After a successful two-point conversion, Payne now leads this one 8-2. Next Gillespie possession. The Miners can't get the punt off. See, it all seems to come full circle for those punters. I probably shouldn't have heaped so much praise on them earlier. Anyway, Payne recovers, and then it's Mason Missouri for 18 yards and the 14-2 advantage with just 11.54 to go. Sam Nolman is an absolute wrecking ball on Pena's defense. Check this out as he buries the ball carrier. Mason Mazir is also flying around all over the place. The night wouldn't be complete though without a little magic from Edmo. It's a tip drill touchdown as the Panthers go up 20-2 with just 3.10 left to play. I gotta give you credit all the charity. Um, he made, he had a great defense on that guy on the slant and he just tipped the ball and I happened to be right, right place at the right time and just took it. One more fumble by the Miners, and Jack Armstrong caps the performance by the Panthers as he hits the hole and skates in for the score, the 27-2 victory, and a 3-0 start to the season. I think our guys kind of just thought they had it right off the bat from the get-go, and then Glispie was definitely more ready in the first half. Um, hands down, i, I got to give it to them, and the conditions are definitely an equalizer when it comes to that. Um, but, I mean, I thought... I thought the second half we came out motivated. Basically, we just said we are losing this game on our home field, so every time just clicked and we, we went in and we started going. We started out slow in the first half, but the second half we came out and we played hard. Yeah, 